Hi there, and welcome to this demonstration of Click Alerting. Over the next 15 minutes, I'm going to take you through an overview and a demo of Click Alerting and show you how you can take intelligent and timely action with your data. Okay, so this is my demo scenario. It's based off a global organization where I'm the SVP of worldwide sales. And I have over 100 sales reps that are reporting to me over three different regions. Overall, we're doing very well. However, I can see that in APAC, we're a little bit behind the other regions, and therefore, I'd like to keep a closer eye on that region. The challenge that I've got, however, is that I'm busy, and I spend most of my time in meetings all day, and I only look at my Click application when I have time. This is where Click Alerting can help me, and alert me instantly if things should start to go off track. Okay, so let's create an alert to notify me if the APAC team fall below 85%. And I can do this by simply clicking on the alert create icon, which brings up the wizard interface, allowing me to start the alert creation process. The first thing that I need to do is to provide a name for my alert. And I can also give the alert a more meaningful description if I want to. The next step in the process is to specify what measure or measures the alert is based off. Now I can either select from the list of measures that are available in the master items in the click application, or I can simply point and click at the visualizations that I'm interested in. Now this is going to pick up the measure that is used for the visualization, allowing me to use it for my alert. This point and click interface makes it really easy for anyone to be able to create an alert of their data without really having to understand how a measure is calculated. Now the next step is to specify the condition of the alert. There are different operators that you can choose from depending on whether you are evaluating numerical or text values. In my scenario, I wanted to know if the APAC team fall below 85%. Therefore, I'm going to choose less than. There are different condition types that you can select depending on what you want to do. So manual value is used if you want to use a specific value to evaluate your data against. Measure allows you to compare against another measure. For example, if you want to compare budget versus actual numbers. Previous scans, this allows you to compare the current measure value against historical numbers. So for example, if you want to be alerted if the measure value is dropped by X percent. And finally, the set condition type allows you to use various types of aggregation and statistical functions as conditions for your alerts. This could be helpful for detecting anomalies and outliers in your data. For now, I'm going to choose manual value and set the value to be 0 0.85 to represent a percentage. This is the final step of the alert creation process where there are some default settings applied already. So, for example, any selections that were made on the click application before creating the alert are automatically applied here uh, and applied as filters. And so this allows me to create the alert in context to the analysis that I've just done on the dashboard. I can choose the frequency, how, how often I want to be notified, as well as choose the delivery channel of where I want to be notified as well. So on email or mobile or both. Once I've clicked on create alert, all the details relating to the alert are posted to the click alerting web application. If we now move over to the click alerting web application, you'll see the different alerts that I've created in the past or I'm subscribed to. You can see which click applications they're based off and you can also see whether they are active or not. The click alerting web application can be used for different types of users, such as business users to manage alerts created through the ClickSense interface, by power users to create alerts on behalf of other users, and ClickSense administrators to create system alerts to monitor ClickSense reload tasks and to send out broadcast notifications to the internal Click community. Creating data alerts through this interface also provides additional functionality, which I'll walk you through now. So following on from my demo scenario, one of the other things that I wanted to be alerted on is if there are any sales reps that have a commit less than the target so that I know who to help. So let's go through and create an alert. So I'm going to call this alert commit versus target and give it a more meaningful description. So now I'm going to go and choose the ClickSense application that the alert is based off. And here I can see a list of ClickSense apps that I've got access to. Uh, if I select one of these applications, I'm only able to see the data that I'm allowed to see. Therefore, the section access, if, the, if there is section access applied, is respected. And I'm only able to create alerts of data that I've got access to. 
Now, one of the key features of click alerting is to provide in context links to the user within the alert so that when the user clicks on the link, not only does it take them back to the click application, but it diverts them to a specific sheet with the relevant filters applied. Selecting the sheet here will determine which sheet the user lands on when they click on the link. Now I need to select the measure that the alert is based off. Uh, therefore, I'm going to select the commit as my first measure to use for this alert. I'm going to add my second measure now as global target. And you can see at the bottom of the screen that click alerting starts to build up a view of the data and what it currently looks like in the application. And for my alert, I want to be notified on only those sales reps that have a commit less than the target. Therefore, I'm going to use this powerful feature here called Drill to Dimension. This will evaluate every sales rep that I have against the condition for the alert. As I select the sales rep, note below how the data table changes. And now it's broken down by sales rep. The next step is to apply the condition to the alert. With the conditions editor within Click Alerting, I can create as many types and combinations of conditions on top of my data. So when you combine this with the rules engine, it allows you to cater for any alerting use case that you might have. For my condition, I'm going to select the commit as my first column. The condition type I'm going to use is measure because I want to compare the results of commit to another measure. The operator I will choose is less than and the compare with I will choose global target. Now I can validate the condition of the alert against the current data set that's in the ClickSense application. And this will allow me to see how many sales reps currently meet my condition. Now on the schedule tab, here I can specify when I would like click alerting to go and check to see if the data has changed. The default value for this is on reload, which basically it means as, as soon as the ClickSense application has finished reloading, Click alerting will go and scan the data to see if the data has changed and if the alert condition has been met. If I don't want to choose the default option of on reload, I can specify a schedule frequency of when to go and check. For this, we've got several options where you can select specific days of the week or dates in the month when you want to scan the data. You can set it to check on specific time intervals or times in the day to go and check. Uh, to give you an example of where this might be useful is in finance scenarios where the last few days of the month perhaps are more important to keep on top of the data than it is in the middle of the month, for example. For now, I'm going to choose the on reload option and continue with the creation of my alert. Within the web application, we have also some additional options to choose from in terms of distributing the alert. I can choose the delivery channel to be email as well as mobile, but I can also choose to distribute this alert out to groups of people and individuals too. Here I'm going to select the global leadership team so that when the alert is triggered, as well as myself being notified, anyone who's in this group will also be notified as well. The final option that we have here is to customize the notification that is sent out with the alert. You can include customizations such as corporate logos, custom text, and perhaps a message to explain to the recipients what they should do now that they've received the alert. So now we've created our alerts. You can see them here in the alerts table. And what I've done in the background is I've, I've just reloaded the click application that those applications, those alerts, are based off. And so whilst we're waiting for those alerts to trigger, uh, what I'll do, I'll take you through the system alerts capability. Now, just to remind you, the system alerts capability allows you to monitor the reload tasks in the ClickSense environment, ensuring that developers and administrators are notified immediately if there is any issues with the reload tasks. What I'm going to do here is create an alert on the sales application that we just used for our alerts. And here in the table, what you can see is all the different reload tasks that I've got in my click management console. I can see the last reload time, the last status, uh, and how long the last reload took. I can choose what event types I want to be alerted on. I will choose failed, and I'm also going to choose in progress because I wanted to be notified if the reload takes longer than it should. Uh, I'm going to go and search for my app and then choose to distribute this to my colleagues if the alert is triggered. Now, I've just seen that the 
alerts have been triggered. Therefore, we'll move over to my inbox to view them. The first email uh, that I received was confirmation that the alerts have been created. So this was the alert that I created in the ClickSense interface where I wanted to know if the APAC team dropped below 85%. The second alert that I created was from the Click Alerting web application and where I wanted to know if the sales reps uh, have a commit lower than the target. The next set of emails are of the alerts being triggered. The first alert that was triggered is of the APAC region falling below 85%, and you can see the details of the alert here. Now, just to take you back to my demo scenario, you know, I'm a sales leader who's generally very busy in meetings all day long. Don't look at my click application that frequently. Having received this alert means that I, I'm notified instantly on the latest situation. I can act upon it immediately, rather than having to wait until the next time I log into my click application. Now that I've received the alerts, in my mind now, I have a number of questions that need answering. And in order to answer these questions, I simply click on the link in my alerts. And this takes me to the Click application. Not only does it take me to the Click application, but it also takes me to the sheet that is relevant to the alert and also apply any filters for me. So I can view the application in context to the alert that has just been triggered. The other alert that was triggered related to the sales reps that have a commit less than target. Here we can see in this alert the number of sales reps that meet the condition as well as the details of them such as their name and the current commits. Just like I showed on the previous alert, clicking on the links in the email takes you back to the click application. In this example, I want to evaluate a specific sales rep and when I click on their name, it applies a filter directly and opens the click application, allowing me to get to my insights faster and determine what's the most appropriate action to take. As well as receiving the alerts on email, I also receive the alerts on my mobile application. If I bring my phone on the screen, you can see the details of the alerts. The alerts come through just like any other notification on your phone. And if I click on one of the alerts, you can see at the bottom that as time goes on, click alerting will start to build a history of the trigger alerts. So you can see how the measure has performed over time. If I click on the alert, it shows me the same information I can see on the email, and it provides me with a link, which when I click on it, it takes me to the ClickSense application, where I can do exactly what I did on my laptop and drill further into the details. So that's everything that I wanted to take you through on this very brief demo of Click Alerting. Thanks for taking the time to watch and if you'd like to find out more about the solution, then please speak to your local Click account representative.